Working with high power amplifiers um, is a little bit tricky when it comes to uh, making measurements, especially measurements of power in a safe manner. And uh, of course, if you're using a small SWR power meter and maybe a little 100 watt load, it's not going to be long before you burn everything up and not run into trouble. So you, you need to have a little bit heavier hardware when it comes to power amplifiers, linear amplifiers and so on. Especially once you're getting up into the four or 500 watt output level. Uh, you need to have a little bit heavier load. Uh, a lot of people, of course, have used the bird watt meter with the 1000H or the 500H type HF slugs. Um, there are a lot of nice high power uh, RF uh, meters out there now uh, that include uh, peak power as well as average power. Why is peak power important? Uh, peak power is important because it allows you to see the power peaks so you can set your automatic level control properly. So just using average power to set the level, you can do it, but you're not really seeing what the voice peaks are doing. So. Uh, this video is all about automatic level control, so the first thing we need is to be able to safely measure power. And uh, we have a pickup method that we're using with the scope where we can see the, uh, the peak power just fine, and we can use that method. So the human voice has a typical 1 to 4 or 1 to 5, that is average to peak, or 5 to 1 peak to average ratio. That means that when we key the transmitter in CW, and we see the full carrier, it's 100 watts in this case, we have 100 watts showing on both meters, and the scope is showing a full scale. So when I get out of CW and I go to lower sideband, Test one, two, three, four, five, check, check, one, two, three, four, five. You can see that the bird watt meter hardly even moves. It's pretty slow. It, it integrates the speech pretty well. Uh, but the, the Daiwa, the little Daiwa, seems to be uh, responding pretty well. But of course, none of these are, are great. And I am exceeding the ALC, so I need to bring the mic gain down. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. I was flat topping there on the scope. You want to minimize that. You're going to get the flat topping on certain consonants, but uh, bring that mic gain down so you're not popping that ALC. One, two, three, four, five. And now you can see we're hardly even moving the meter. But this is typical. You're not going to see a lot when you're, uh, when you're doing sideband on an averaging meter like these. So, of course, you're going to crank the, uh, the mic gain up. You keep cranking the mic gain up to try to get more and more output. But of course that makes more and more uh, interference for your neighbors. More and more splatter, more and more intermodulation distortion. So keep that mic gain low enough and the scope is your friend. That's going to show you really what's going on. A peak reading a PEP peak reading power meter would be a, a big improvement. So here's a couple pieces of equipment that we'll use during this video to make some of the measurements and to show uh, automatic level control. A fairly controversial subject by the way. It doesn't matter whether you're talking about tube type or valve type power amplifiers or the latest solid state amplifiers. Automatic level control is a pretty controversial subject. Let's do a quick ALC experiment using the TS520 and the amplifier. Right now uh, ALC is disconnected and I have the, the transceiver tuned up on 80 meters. When I go into the tune position I'm getting 20 watts out on the, on the smaller meter. I'm using the smaller meter so you can see it a little bit easier. 20 watts in tune on 80 meters. Now I'm going to turn the amplifier on and we'll see um, 
what the amplifier gives us both in the tune and the operate position. You know we have 20 watts of drive power. Amplifier is on in the tune position. Let's see what we get out. A little over 100 watts. Okay, about 100 watts out. Now let's go to operate. About 300 watts out. So 100 watts in the tune position for the amplifier, 300 watts in the operate position. Next I'm going to put some ALC in, in the operate position, and bring it down. I'm bringing up the ALC in back of the transceiver. Here it comes. Let's bring that down to 100 watts. So now we're 100 watts out in the operate position. Let's go back to the tune position on the amplifier. Here we go, tune position. 100 watts. Back to operate. 100 watts. Tune again. 100 watts. So that's how ALC works. Basically, the detector that's in the amplifier is sending back a negative voltage that's higher when we're in the operate position. And that is added to the ALC built into the transceiver and keeping that output steady at 100 watts, no matter what the amplifier's gain is and within reason what its tuning is, its job is to keep the output at 100 watts. So that is an example of a feedback system or a leveling system. Now it's a very harsh application of it. That's not the way we're using it. Uh, we're not trying to keep the power out steady at one, one power level. We're just looking to control voice peaks and save the amplifier from overdrive. But that's essentially how feedback works. So I now have the amplifier in line. So if we go to CW, I've adjusted the scope. And we're putting out, looks like a little over 550 watts. That's fine. Let's go to lower sideband. One, two, three, four, five. Check. Five, five, five. One, two, three, four. Again, even though we've got a solid 500 watts out in CW, notice the watt meter is just ticking up here to the, you know, maybe 100 watt level. Again, it's that 1 to 5 or 1 to 4 type uh, average to peak ratio. And that's just typical of single sideband, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So what are we trying to do with compression, with speech processing? We're trying to bring that peak to average ratio up from 1 to 5 to maybe 3 to 1. So let's say we like that 550 watts, or maybe 500 watts, and we want that to be the maximum that the amplifier puts out. That's going to be our safety level. So basically, we will take the automatic level control, and we will bring that up to the point where the negative voltage from the detector in the amplifier starts to cut in. So let's see if we can bring that down just a little bit. What we're going to do is we're going to look at the meter. We're going to bring that down just a little bit by bringing in some ALC. Let's try it. Okay, I just brought it down. Just brought it down a little bit. Now that's going to prevent the amplifier from being overdriven. So that, I'm going to call that my safety level for the linear amplifier. That's how much ALC I put in. So no matter what I do, I'm not going to be putting out any more than, what is it now? Just about 500. That's going to be my limit. I've lowered the output by about, oh, maybe 10% by using the ALC. I'm going to call that my safety level. One, two, three, four, five. Hello, test one, two. 
Okay, let's get the scope on too. Okay, we now have some ALC in line. One, two, three, four, five. Hello, test. Testing one, two, three. Hello, check one, two, three, four, five. Hello, one, two, three, four, five. Hello, check. So the audio still sounds good. The pattern looks okay. But we now know that we're not going to have any more than just about 500 watts. We've lowered the, uh, the amplifier's output by about 10%. And now we have uh, our protective ALC in there. It's not influencing the audio at all. It's just there for protection. Okay, W2D, your turn. Okay, thank you, Ned, for the uh, for the great opportunity to uh, try out this TS520 with the old uh, Gonset GSB201, the grandfather of all those Ameritrons. How copy this New Hampshire station from Whiskey United to Delta? Yeah, over. Five and nine, nine Oklahoma and into Arkansas. Five nine, and to Louisiana. Five Very nice, Mike. Fifty eight, Oklahoma. Fifty nine, North Cal. Five nine plus, Northern California. Five two B. You can exit the point for the five players. Roger. Any copy on Mike? Yeah, Mike, sorry, Eagle 5 and 6. 5, 6, easy on. Well, thank you, guys. Wonderful. I'm hearing everybody and uh, beautiful signals from everybody and uh, using a rectangle loop up about 60 feet. The old rectangle loop bottom fed. 73s. Thanks, Matt. Oh, boy, that was good. We first met, I first met Mike up on 10 or 12 meters. What a big signal up there. So he knows how to do RF, Gary. Over. Yeah, got a great station. Your big signal coming out of New Hampshire. Very nice. I appreciate it. Guys, ID, time. I know. ID, ID, guys. We'll do it. So what is a closed-loop automatic level control system anyway? Really, it's a simple feedback system. Any automatic volume control or level control system involves bringing back an inverted polarity sample of the output to be summed with the input source thus reducing or increasing the system gain. This stabilizes or accurately sets the gain of the amplifier over variables like temperature, frequency, antenna match. You can actually set the feedback to the point of compression in an RF global feedback system like this, but there are simply too many variables between rigs, amplifiers, including the threshold setting, the band-to-band -band response time, and the attack and release timing to make it practical. Rather, we're simply trying to use the ALC feedback as an ultimate drive level limiter, so we don't blow up the amplifier. Will it help reduce splatter? Well, it could, but your rig's own ALC and speech processing should have done that already at low level. So this is really not the purpose of this global ALC. Now that I brought up speech processing, let's do a little review. You know, there are several ways to perform analog speech processing, and many more with DSP now. The first method is the oldest, and one of the most effective, audio clipping with a post filter. It's pretty easy to get 3 dB of intelligibility improvement with this alone. That's like doubling your talk power. Even more effective is IF clipping intermediate frequency clipping, where you clip the modulated waveform at the last intermediate stage in the frequency domain, just before upconversion. Alternatively, you can also upconvert the audio to an IF, do the clipping, and then convert back down to audio, and then send that into the radios modulator. You can get upwards of 4 to 6 dB of intelligibility improvement with this so-called RF or IF clipping. Next, we have the audio compressor. This system keeps the voice in a regulated range, but it has a threshold and attack and release time constant system that you need to tune up. It's a very powerful concept, but not very useful for single sideband. It can bring very weak sounds up, like fan noise or maybe your life partner working out upstairs. But it could also reduce the sound of the microphone tipping over in your excitement during a contest. If the mic level stays below a threshold, then you remain at high gain. The compressor won't touch it. But as soon as your speech goes over that threshold, the compression will begin. The attack control specifies how quickly the compressor reacts in reducing gain and how quickly it kicks in after the signal goes over that threshold you set.
The release dictates the point at which the compressor should stop compressing. So when the signal dips below the threshold, the compressor won't stop working immediately. It will continue to operate for the period of the release time that you've set. This approach is used for high fidelity voice, as in broadcast stations and maybe AM on 75 meters. It offers very little in terms of intelligibility, so it's seldom used with single sideband. Finally, we have this global compression that we've been talking about, known as Automatic Level Control, or ALC. ALC attempts to keep the RF drive below the point that the amplifier in the transceiver, this is the internal ALC in your transceiver, or the RF out of the transceiver, as with the amplifier drive till we blow it up, below a certain level that could cause splatter or destructively overdrive the amplifier. This is fairly easy to implement inside the transceiver, where you've got control of everything in your design, uh, and it will act very nicely as an effective splatter reduction failsafe, but it's more difficult to control externally now that we have mismatched components that aren't designed to work together to give you those thresholds, attack, and release times. So it's used more as a safety device in our case. It lets the transceivers ALC and speech compression do its job, while the external ALC is the protection circuit. So here's a synopsis of the four methods that we've talked about for compression, audio compression, to improve intelligibility. It shows the IF clipping method, sometimes done externally with an audio to IF, back to audio, sort of an adjunct approach, uh, to uh, the IF clipping totally internal to the transceiver. Audio clipping, this can be done with uh, various diodes and, and other ways of uh, actually chopping off those low energy top excursions and improving your average power. Then we have uh, audio compression which we talked about which is not giving a lot of intelligibility improvement but it is a high fidelity method of speech compression. And then finally we have RF compression where we're doing uh, things uh, really external. It's not giving much improvement at all but it will provide the protection that we're looking at uh, for, for the input on your amplifier and uh, excess grid current. The Antichrist machine, I can't even get onto it. So WU2D, D, would you please call? This is WU2D on 10 meters uh, calling in New Hampshire. Does anyone uh, receive this signal? Over. Five and four into New Zealand and just building to five and two in North Delta. Five two, Southeast Texas. This is Whiskey United 2 Delta. Whiskey Uniform 2 Delta, over. Okay, on Toronto, this piece to, uh, this piece to, uh, this piece to, you, Uniform Delta, okay. IQSL, you're five nine. Delta Quebec two three. India Victor Golf, you are five eight. 58 in New Hampshire. My name, Mike, Mexico, India, Kilo, Echo. Mike is the name. Dairy Queen, 23, IVG from Whiskey United 2 Delta. Okay, Roger, Roger. Thank you. You are 5, 9, 